Welcome to another video on the HP Prime. So today I'd like to demonstrate um, some techniques on creating um, graphical interfaces. We're going to use a couple of icons. Um, so let me just show you what the final product looks like. This is a small routine that I used in my um, 3D graphing application. Let's go ahead and select this icon or icons program and hit run and what we see is some icons that show up and um, if I pick something and it returns the state of uh, my clicks so these two are tied together to a single single flag and then these two icons have their own separate flags that's what we see when we so if I click here it will be zero for the first value or here one for the first value and this is this middle value the third value Again, so if I click here, we have a 1. And if we run again, click here, we have a 1 on the third position. And the first two positions um, are tied to that first value there. OK, so let's go ahead and take a look at um, first how to create graphics um, that we can imp import inside a program. So let me show you the actual source. And rather than showing it to, to you through the emulator, here's the actual source. And down here, all those characters, hexadecimal characters, those are the um, graphics data for our icons. <clears throat> OK, so to begin with, what we'll need is to create some graphics through uh, whatever um, graphics program that um, you have available to you. I'm just using an old version of Photoshop. So here I've created a 64 by 64 icon. This is my trace icon. And there is a program called DimGrob Helper. And this is um, a little file that was released to uh, enable users to easily import graphics into their programs. So let's uh, select all and copy with Control C there. Then I'm going to open up DimGrob Helper. And we're going to get the picture from the clipboard since I copied it from my uh, Photoshop program. And here we are. Here's our icon. And we can select a transparent color if we want. So since I want that black there to be transparent, uh, I'll go ahead and select black. And we can do one of two things. We can either create a dim grub command that we can import into our program or create an icon command. And since my graphics isn't too big, I'll use icon. Um, the nice feature with icon is you can give it a name and then refer to that picture as a name as opposed to having to um, specifically use a graphics um, buffer. So here we go, get icon from picture. And this is the data that gets generated. Notice at the very beginning, it's icon followed by name. Now what you would do is you would replace that name by whatever name you want. So let's take a look back at our program. Here's the actual source. And down here, we have these icon statements. Now, because the icon statement has data that you know goes all the way through like this, uh, that's why we see it down here. But usually, this would just appear as a single line on uh, in the actual calculator, like so down here. OK? So. Uh, we basically copy paste into our source, and the way we use it is um, uh, instead of using buffers, we we use the actual name um, inside double quotes. So let's go over the source code real quickly, and uh, I'll also explain some of the details behind detecting mouse clicks, or really the mouse click is just uh, your finger touching the screen. Um, so export G3D pick icon. This is basically just uh, the name of the program that I want to. Uh, uh, that's the name I'm going to use for this program. So uh, in the command line, I could I could type GD3 or G3D underscore pick icon and run it from there. Or of course I can just run from the program catalog. We're going to create a couple of um, local variables. I is just for a loop. Key is for um, basically a generic key, which includes mouse. Uh, get mouse is basically a little variable that we use to um, run a an infinite loop. 
and when git mouse is zero that's when we exit out of there so what does dimgrab do? dimgrab basically um, creates a, a graphics buffer and we have g0 through g9 to use and that's apparently the limitation on the prime for now so we're going to uh, create a 320 by 70 graphics object called g4 and similarly for g5 and what we'll do is um, we'll copy a certain portion of the screen g0 to g4 we're basically creating a backup of g0 and we use this later on to do our scrolling okay so uh, when we run this okay and when you click and then this the screen uh, goes back to normal like so so we're basically saving that back buffer uh, for our uh, effect now I'm gonna create a um, a 320 by 70 a graphics object also called G3 and that's the actual icon menu that shows up here so 320 being the width and 70 is how tall this is and here's how I actually create it so this extra parameter here says let's make the background black and the blit command basically copies um, the data from for example the XY icon which I named down at the bottom here so copy its data into the G3 buffer um, and we're going to paste it at the coordinate 13.3 so that's 13 pixels over to the right and 3 pixels down okay and that's relative to the actual graphics object G3 or the, that buffer okay now on the screen the, our screen is actually a 320 by 240 buffer but for that for specifically G3 it's only 320 by 70 so we only need to move down three units um, the rest are pretty much the same here's my for loop which um, basically copies this uh, this icon menu onto the screen and the way it does it is it actually auto this is a comment which we can just delete for now um, what it does is it copies all of the contents of G3 but because we didn't specify uh, what part of G3 we want to copy it's going to copy the whole thing otherwise there would be parameters after here it copies the whole thing and it squishes it down into this region specified by these four coordinates the first two is the upper left corner of our region and our destination and the, last, the next two um, values are the bottom right corner of our destination buffer. So our destination buffer is G0. Our source buffer is G3. Since we didn't spy, specify any region after G3, we're using the entire buffer. And we're going to copy it into this region here. So it's basically a 320 by, um, by 2 times i height. And so when i goes up to 35, for example, then it will be twice 35 or 70. Um, pixels tall and that's how we um, bring in for example okay so that's how we see that effect there and notice that uh, when we was um, doing that um, copying over it automatically scaled for us and the next part is where we get our um, input so the wait command if you give it an argument of minus one it not only um, pauses the program but it pauses for until you press a key or touch the screen if you touch the screen it returns the wait command returns a list as opposed to an integer if you touch a button so that's where we have type key equals six and within that list if that list is of size three so that's when we actually will get a, um, a, a press now I kind of cheated here because I just used the, you know, the size of the list being equal three. What you should do is you should actually test the, um, the actual mouse uh, type. So there are different kinds of touches, screen touches. You can you can click, you can drag, and whatnot. So you really should uh, test that. But I got kind of lazy, and I just tested for the size of the list when um, when you touch the screen. The value in key here will be a list containing from one up to three possibly more integers or maybe was it five anyway you can check the uh, built-in help key 
on uh, wait for more information. This here just basically, so key, the third position, the third value in that key list is the Y coordinate. We're just making sure it's between 90 and 150. And these are the individual X regions, horizontal regions for our icons. And once we get uh, some, some sort of input on the screen, we then reverse that copy paste. Okay, so here, just to explain a little bit, remember that we had saved a copy of the original screen before this loop goes uh, into action. We saved a copy of it from the original screen, G0, that's the, the current view, into G4. So now we're copying G4 into G5, and then uh, we're um, squishing down our icon, G3, our, that, that menu, into G5, and then copying back over into the viewing screen. Um, so there's the source. I'll leave it up for a little bit longer. Let's see. Probably the, let's see if I can fit everything in there. That's almost everything. Probably don't need that return. And just a couple things missing up there. Um, OK, so in the end, what you get is something that looks like this. Um, and of course, this keeps showing up until you actually press in the, the proper region. Um, I recommend when you do this, though, that you don't specify exactly this region because people's fingers are going to be thick and whatnot. Um, usually, I, I recommend specifying a smaller region for an acceptable click. So if I click, for example, right here, it's not going to accept anything. But if I click here, then it will accept. And it's basically to prevent you know people with big fingers like me from pressing in between these two lines and then the, the calculator um, incorrectly thinks it's, it's over here or over here. OK. Um, and where I ended up using this was here in my 3D grapher. This is something that I've uh, mentioned before. So now when I click on the screen, it brings that up. I click on the trace button, and it brings up trace. Right, And then if I want to get out of there, uh, eventually I'll, I'll put little icons down here to, to basically say, OK, we're in a certain mode here. For example, if you want box mode, so you need to have, well, I need to have some sort of indicator whether or not that mode is on or off. Same thing with trace. Um, but anyway. That's a that's pretty much it for that. Um, if you are interested in the actual source and you can't read it from here, just uh, drop me a line on the forums, and I'd be more than willing to share. Thanks again for watching, and I hope that this was useful to you. Um, maybe in my next video, I'll explain on how to create a uh, a custom key handler with uh, key repetition uh, for those of you who are interested in. Um, input programming. Okay, thanks again for watching and I'll catch you all next video.